If you're a mountain biker, chances are you have already noticed this, but mountain biking is not a cheap sport. In fact, it can be very expensive. That being said, I can think of 10 mountain bike products under 150 US dollars that can make your riding experience better. Let's check them out. Welcome back everybody to my channel. A few months ago, I've asked you on YouTube, what type of content do you want me to be doing? And I've received a lot of comments, a lot of messages, and I really appreciate that. A lot of you had amazing ideas and I took note of everything, but one thing came back a lot. It was that people like yourself want to see more product review, but also more tech tips. So this is what I'm gonna be doing today. That's gonna be my first video of this style. We're gonna take 10 of the products I'm writing under 150 US dollars, and I'm gonna explain you why they benefit my writing, why I use them, why I like them. Let's start. Before we start that video, I would like to address a concern that you may have. You probably wonder how a professional mountain biker can have an unbiased opinion on products he uses when he has a relationship with those brands. And that's completely true, I hear you. That being said, I'm fully independent and I manage everything by myself. I'm not on a team where I have little to no say on the different relationship with the brands. So I get to pick up products and brands that I truly believe in. I test everything and those products are products that I believe allow me to ride at the best of my abilities. So I am comfortable promoting them. Now, without further ado, let's start with product number one. First product, the one-up handlebar. This is the aluminum version that retails for 89 US dollars. It's born after the Big Brother, the carbon version that was introduced five years ago. I love this bar for many different reasons, but one thing I would say, too many mountain bikers neglect their position on the bike and a handlebar can make or break your riding position. To me, it's something extremely important and I pay a ton of attention to it. So I will start with a few uh, key elements. First of all, those bars are available in 20 or 35 millimeter rise. Myself, I use the 35 millimeter option on every single bike. I feel that gives me a nice upright position, give me a lot of confidence when it gets steep and gnarly. And overall, I feel more comfortable with the 35 millimeter rise. 20 millimeter rise is a really good option for people who like to pedal a lot more than I do. People who live in flatter terrain or people who ride uh, 29 or downhill bikes with a 200 millimeter fork where your position is already very high. So sometimes a 35 millimeter rise bar can be harder to get the grip on the front wheel, but that's very personal. Then in terms of bend, this comes with a five degree up sweep, eight degree back sweep. So it keeps my elbow out, gives me comfortable and a precise uh, steering on the bike, but the biggest thing on those bar is the oval patterns around the bend. So what it does is it basically creates a bar that's compliant. So the idea of that is that it gives you some flex to make it more comfortable for your hands, your wrist, and it reduces your arm pump. It is definitely something that you will notice, especially when you ride longer and rougher tracks. Those are awesome. They come at 337 grams. I cut mine at 745 millimeters, but they come stock at 800 millimeters. And yeah, they've been unreal. I also ride the carbon version. I like the carbon version, I'll say a little bit more because of the feeling of the carbon versus the aluminum. I like uh, the response of the material over the aluminum. Uh, but obviously, even though they are lighter, 225 grams, if I'm correct, they are a little bit more expensive. That's about it for this bar. I think they are unreal. Now let's check out product number two. The Specialized Static 4 retails for 120 US dollar, but it's currently on sale at 60 US dollar on backcountry.com. So check out the link in the description. 
I really like this helmet. Uh, it offers a really low protection on the back of the head. It's got the MIPS Evolve solution, which allows the inside of the helmet to rotate a little bit to limit the impact on your brain if you hit your head. Which, by the way, uh, I had a super gnarly crash last week and I was wearing this helmet. I hit my head really hard. Unfortunately, I didn't have any concussion symptoms. Definitely a bit of luck, but I feel like the helmet did a great job. It had a couple of dents, so I got rid of the helmet, but it definitely did what it was supposed to do. Another thing in terms of protection, the visor comes up super easily. You can just pop it like this. And if you ever need to replace the visor, it only costs $20, which is pretty inexpensive. You can clip it back super easily like this. Another thing I like, you can mount the GoPro on the front of the helmet. Uh, it's tucked away below the visor, allows you to get the best uh, angle. There is some space to all the glasses, which is super nice. I, I use it a lot when I go uphill and if I'm sweating a lot, that way the glasses don't get uh, foggy. What else? It looks really cool. It's 380 grams in size medium. Myself, I use a size small. It comes in a bunch of different colors. That's it. Product number three, my glasses. Over the past four years, I've received so many questions on which glasses are those and why I wear glasses. Well, those are the Julbo Fury with a spectral lens. They retail for 139 US dollars. And why I use them? Well, they look super cool, I think. But no, the main reason is for protection. They protect me from mud, rain, rocks, UV, branches, anything really that could jump to your eyes. And also they allow me to see. When I'm riding fast, my eyes water too much. And without glasses, I simply cannot see. Things I really like about those glasses is that they've got a large coverage. They offer uh, a really good fit. They do not move on your head. You've got rubber around the nose piece and around the branches. So when I'm riding steep, technical and gnarly terrain, they still stay in place even though I have a small face. They're really light. Um, there is space between the lens and the frame, which allows the glasses to clear the fog really well. Another thing I really like is how easy it is to pop up the lens. I can just push it like this. I can clean the lens when I'm on the trail and I can replace the lens very easily. Sometimes you'll see I use a completely clear lens and this is particularly good for the winter when it's dark, when it's rainy and when you don't even see the sun all day. You can purchase a clear lens separately or you can get the same glasses with a reactive lens, which is gonna change from zero to three or one to three, depending on the luminosity. Obviously, those are a bit more expensive and they retail for 229 US dollars. And they've been awesome. I've really been enjoying using those glasses and uh, you should check them out. Product number four is not something that you wear or that's on your bike, but it's something that every mountain biker should have, a tire pressure gauge. This is a Topic Smart Gauge D2. It's super easy to use. You press the on-off button, select your valve, Presta or Schroeder, your unit, PSI or bar, plug it to your valve, and it tells you how much tire pressure you have. Tire pressure is extremely important. Riding with the right tire pressure is gonna give you the most amount of confidence, the maximum performances for your tire and your bike, and also, the least amount of chance to get a flat or break your wheel. There is different tire casing, which is something that you have to take in consideration along with your weight, the type of terrain you're riding, your skill, your style, how fast you ride, the temperature, so many variables. But to give you an idea on my trail bikes, I usually run double down casing from Maxxis with 19 on the front, 21 PSI. On my downhill bike, I run downhill casing with 24 on the front and 28 PSI on the back. So this will be a separate video where I will dive super deep into tire pressure, but that's a good starting point. Having one of these is going to make you a better rider playing with your tire pressure and know how low you can go, how high you have to go, and really understanding how things work is gonna make you a better biker, get one.
Product number five, the STFU. This is an invention from my buddy Chris Kovarik. He's a legend of the sport. He's got the biggest win on a Donnell World Cup ever with 14 seconds over second place at Fort William. It was just an incredible run. But long story short, this is a chain dampener for your bike. Your chain goes inside and the idea is that it reduces noise. You mount this on your chain stays and the chain basically can no longer rattle against the frame. That makes your bike more quiet. As a result, you can hear better, you can brake later, you can corner faster. It is more enjoyable, your riding is gonna be more efficient and this only costs 30 US dollar for the Daniel version, 35 US dollar for the trail bike version and I've got a code REMI15 that will give you an extra 15% discount. Next up, we got the Ergon G1 Evo Grips. So earlier we were talking about the handlebar and how much impact it had on your riding. Well, so do the grip. I really like those grips because of the ergonomic shape. As you can see, they are narrower on the inside, wider on the outside, which is really good to keep your elbows out and provide you with the best riding position. It's really good also to lower arm pumps. As you can see, uh, there's some good cushion on the outside and they are cut on an angle, which makes a lot of sense because when you close your wrist, uh, your palm of the hand is wider than where your pinky is. The basic model starts at 35 US dollar and this is a factory rubber that's softer. It provides better dampening and it's got a nice old slick finish. Uh, is at 45 US dollar. They come either in slim or regular. Myself, I'm size small and I prefer the regular grips. I've been loving that product. Check them out. Number seven, the Mud Hugger. This is the Evo Long. It also comes in a shorter version and that's basically a mud guard. So it protects your face from splashes of mud, water, so you can see better and you can ride safely. I use it on every single bike except my dirt jumper. And this comes very handy in Squamish where it's raining six months a year. But also the rest of the year, I keep it on because it does protect your fork seals from the dust. So you basically don't have to service your suspension nearly as much. Um, I like the look, looks pretty moto to me. It doesn't make any single noise. It's very reliable, you can bend it. It actually works on the steady rack. A lot of people have been asking me that. I've never broken, cracked, damaged one in the past seven or eight years I've been using one. The long one retails for 35 US dollar and the shorter one for 28 US dollar, definitely a must have. Number eight, a Maxxis Minion DHR2. This is one of my all time favorite product. And for you, a great way to make an investment to your bike that's fairly affordable is to pick up a good set of tires. That's gonna allow you to ride faster, but also safer. Now, Maxxis, it can be a bit confusing because they've got so many models for every single discipline. Different casing, rubbers, style, everything. So I'll be doing a future video about that so I can help you to pick up your best tire. But now, I want to focus on this one. So that's a Maxxis Minion DHR2. I've been using that tire all over the world. From BC, whether it's wet or dry, Mexico, Chile, Switzerland, France, Everywhere I've gone, I've never been disappointed. This performs really well as a back tire. It rolls fast, it breaks really well, and the cornering is very predictable. This one specifically is a 27.5 because I use it on the rear. Most of my bikes are mullet, 27.5 rear, 29 on the front. Um, Swissy grip, which refers to the rubber. So the Swissy Max grip is the highest performance of rubber that Maxis does. It is softer than a 3 Terra, but obviously it does wear out faster and it does pedal a little bit slower. But if you want to really improve your riding going downhill, 3C Max Grip is the way to go. And this one is a double down casing. So it sits right in between the EXO casing, which is for lighter trail bike, and the downhill casing, which is obviously for downhill bike. It gives you a lot of support. Um, it's very reliable and it's middle weight, so it's not too heavy to pedal. Really encourage you to check that out. Starting price is 80 US dollar, goes all the way up to 112 US dollar depending on the casing and rubbers.
but those are incredible and they make a huge difference on your riding. Next up, we've got the KMC X12. I know that's just a chain, but swapping your chain fairly often on your bike is the best way to keep a shifting going smooth and avoid issues such as breaking your chain on the middle of a trail or on a drop, which could be really bad. I've been using the X12 with a Shimano transmission for the past few years, and I really like how precise the shifting has been, but also how reliable. I've never broken a chain since I'm on KMC, and I joined KMC back in 2017. So I think that's really impressive. It also exists as the X10 and X11 for 10 and 11 speed, which by the way, I run on my downhill bike with the Shimano Saint uh, transmission. Starts at 40 US dollar, which is quite affordable. And it's a good alternative to the other options out there, especially with the cool colors. Product number 10. Well, it's not actually a product, but it's a service. Give some love to your bike. This is one of the most valuable advice you'll see in this channel. A bike that's clean, well-maintained, and well set up is gonna give you an unreal riding experience. Whereas if you got a very fancy bike that's poorly maintained and poorly set up, you're not gonna be able to push on the trail. It's not gonna be really fun. You're gonna feel awkward. You're gonna feel like something is off. You might run into some reliability issue and it's not gonna be a good time. So hopefully in this channel, I can teach you to the best of my ability some tips so you can understand how everything works on the bike so you can get a setup on your bike that's gonna work well and you can overcome some challenges that you've encountered on your local trails. Maybe it's doing that super steep slab that you've been looking at. Maybe it's that gap or that drop you've been thinking about doing for years. So hopefully you're gonna be learning a lot. Thanks a lot for watching that video. Please make sure you like it, leave me a comment and subscribe. I'll see you next week.